The old term was necrotizing fish eye. What is it? Excellent, excellent, very right. It is fascia, it is, so fascia is involved. Skin is intact. But what did I tell you was the supply to the skin? It is through the fascia. It's like you have a building on pillars. You keep taking pillars away and you don't know one day it collapses. The skin is gone. Therefore, we have to go for early release so that the supply to the skin is not cut off. And necrotizing fasciitis is different from cellulitis. It will cause more damage. And what is characteristic of this? It is a symbiotic or synergistic gangrene. What is that? Okay, behind you, behind you. Anybody? Yes, Rohit. Symbiotic should have given you a hit. Synergistic. One pathogen causes the destruction of the blood supply and another pathogen then starts proliferating. Not two different pathogens. Go on, what I'm just saying. So, so your necrotizing fasciitis destroys the blood supply. One thing stops saying your this, your that. So you'll be having. The necrotizing fasciitis destroys the blood supply to the skin, which makes conditions ripe for a anaerobic infection. You are a storyteller, but horrible one. <laughs> Necrotizing fasciitis itself has to happen first. So you started from the wrong end of the story. And sit down, pity. Now, there are two types of bacteria, aerobes and anaerobes. They are in symbiosis here. It's a cause of necrotizing soft tissue infection. Aerobes consume all the oxygen and create the dead tissue. Now, anaerobes can survive and eat that dead tissue. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? So, don't make, create stories. Science is not fiction. Now, if you have aerobes and anaerobes both together contributing to gangrene, that is synergistic gangrene. Mm -hmm. Also called as symbiotic mm -hmm. gangrene. So, how will you manage it? Kill one of them. Mm -hmm. The other will automatically die. So, give oxygen. Or, Provide antibiotics for both. What is the drug of choice for anaerobes? Last row. Yes, back to you. I think. Drug of choice for anaerobes. You pass your pharmacology. You have no? No problem, sit down, no problem. Next. Metronid is all good, give a round of applause. You are supposed to know it. <laughs> That's going too far. Clindamycin and metronid is all. These are the drugs of choice. Yes. Excellent point. That's why I didn't stop there. What did I say? We have to first deprive the tissue, get the dead tissue out. So reduce the number of bacteria. And if we give oxygen, it is usually for gas forming organisms. That is only mostly Clostridium, Welshi, Enemitians, etc. Necrotizing soft tissue infection doesn't require hyperbaric oxygen. The treatment of necrotizing soft tissue infection is debrima, debrima, and debrima. Three times D. Stand. Second, dead, deadly tissue should be out. Third thing, you have to, basically, you have to release the fascia. Because if you don't release the fascia, the supply to the skin would go. And you get a black patch on top after a while. But the damage is more. Skin is later. So you should release it, anticipate it. So how would it show up? How do, I, how do I tell them? Cellulitis will be red skin, raised temperature. But the moment the blood appear, it is fasciitis. So the blood supply is going up. That's when you release. If you release it, skin won't go. Tissue would be lost. So we will we'll, we'll take care of the dead tissue. 
will provide broad spectrum cover, aerobe and anaerobes, will set for culture, like I said, deep tissue, take care of the fungus also, and then provide a systemic antibiotic. Is that okay? That's a good, good question. Any other question? Sir, when we are diagnosing the patient, we have diagnosed the current uh, the chief complaint, but the patient is having an underlying uh, vascular problem. In the factors are diabetes and hypertension. So we have uh, ruled out the diabetes one. Uh, well, we have stated the diabetes one, but it's due to hypertension, the patient can also have polyarthritis nodosa, uh, which can cause gangrene. See, this is called medicine syndrome. Most things in medicine that are taught rarely happen. Okay. And that's what they teach more often. See, a patient who is diabetic doesn't always have to develop a diabetic yeah, foot. Yes, sir. How does he develop it? I have told you. Mm -hmm. Now, diabetes, diabetics are at a risk of getting diabetes. arterial disorders, arterial diseases. Yes, Polyarthritis nodosa is not caused by hypertension. Important. It's one type. Okay. And you probably see one case or two cases of that. Okay. We are looking at a diabetic who's got chronic limb ischemia. How do you link the two? That would be a better question. Mm. Now, I'll link it not to diabetes, I'll link it to the atherosclerosis which happened due to diabetes. Mm. Therefore, I would look for a block at a higher level. Mm. Because what are the other diseases in males around this time? Okay, now that we, what are the causes of presenite? Atherosclerosis, one in diabetes. Any other? Uh, That's not a disease. Disease, disease. Have you heard of monkeypox sclerosis? You have? What is that? It is the sclerosis in the cancelling of the tunica media of the M for monkeypox, right? Not monkey, monkeypox. M. M for men. Note it, this you won't get anywhere. M for men. M for medium sized vessels. M for media. So, and M for middle aged. That's about it. This can happen. But diabetes causes pre senile atherosclerosis also. Exclude that condition rather. So, it's a diabetic. So, the cause could be this is not a diabetic foot. Mm. It's an ischemic limb because there's a dry gangrene. Mm. Line of demarcation is present. Mm. But diabetic foot can also produce this picture. Mm. So, we both will coexist. The diabetes with the vascular part is possible. Mm -hmm. I told you diabetes involves micro vessels as well as macro mm -hmm. vessels. Mm -hmm. Both. Here has atherosclerosis, here has angiopathy. Mm -hmm. So both could be there together. Mm -hmm. Take a history of importance too in this patient. Very important. Good point. Give a round of applause. This is one right. Round round. You can do that. Even if they didn't clap on metro you can clap. Because yeah. metro all should have been answered. Now, when you're taking history, in, there was no history of claudication also taken. That's where it got lost. Is that right? You take history of claudication and you find out claudication where. Mm. If the patient says my pain was in the calves, which system I'm talking about? Hemoropopletal. Patient was in the thighs, backside, which system is it? Aortoiliac. Mm. Gluteal region, iliac and above. So if there is a pain which is claudication in the gluteal region, I'm looking at aorto disease. I'll take history of importance in a patient who's younger. How old is your patient? You take a history of importance there. Why? For the saddle thrombus. What is the saddle thrombus? The saddle thrombus that goes into your pulmonary artery and... You stop your... I'll fix it. No, even in the exam, it will be harmful for you. Don't give that exam. Never do that. Uh, a saddle thrombus is a process that uh, when, uh, at a point that the artery bifurcates, it enters into the saddle thrombus. The aortic bifurcation, you have a thrombus on both sides. Sit down. Which artery? Aorta bifurcation, thrombus on either side. Sit down. There are symptoms of importance, but here the important feature is claudication in the gluteal region. Okay. Yes. Answer. Any other question? So that's about a chronic limb skin. That's about dry and wet gangrene. And that's about lots of whys and lots of hows.
which you should know. If you know that, you can build a story anytime. Mm. Build a story on facts. At least they should be close to that. Then, necrotizing soft tissue infection, anywhere. Mm. Symbiotic gangrene, synergistic gangrene, diabetic foot, management of all of them, investigation of all. That's your case. Pick up another ischemic limb some other time, after a gap, and present it better. Take up a Burgess disease, take a diabetic foot, take a atherosclerotic limb, they're always, almost always last the exam. Mm -hmm. 